Hello and welcome to Progressive Education Society's Modern College of Pharmacy, Nigri Pune. Myself, Dr. Bhushan Pimple. In this video, we will discuss about the details of, uh, details of determination of length as well as the width of fibers. Now, these are these will be the plant fibers. Before moving on to the detailed practical, we'll just have the brief introduction as to why this practical is important and what it is basically. This kind of practicals wherein uh, we are uh, measuring the size of microscopic objects is called as micrometry because the objects are microscopic and we are using a scale even that is microscopic. With the help of the scale, we are de determining either the mean diameter or length or width. The importance of this practical is in authentication of raw material. That means to determine whether the raw material provided to us is pure or has it been adulterated by some material. To determine the impurity profiling, impurity profiling in sense in the raw material due to the presence of certain impurities uh, under the microscope these impurities can be easily visible and can easily be distinguishable, distinguishable uh, as compared to the authentic crude drug. It also helps us to determine the type of raw material. Now let us take an example of starch. Starch is present in almost all the plants. And commercially, uh, starch is required uh, for various purposes like uh, as a binding agent, as a disintegrating agent, as a sweat absorbent in uh, our surgical gloves, or as a bulk forming agent in certain tablets or capsules and gliding agent. And there are in numerous applications of it. Now, this, commercially, there are four kinds of starch normally used like maize starch, rice starch, wheat and potato starch. So now if you have ordered for rice starch and by chance if the supplier has provided you potato starch under the microscope with the help of micrometry you will be able to distinguish between them. Now remember students in this uh, case you cannot make use of iodine test because both the starches will test positive for iodine. This is the only test or this is the only method to distinguish between the different types of starches. It also helps us to determine the uh, whether our formulation is complete or not. Like so suppose a micro formulation, there are numerous micro formulations like micro capsules, micro emulsions or micro crystals and so on. So now once you have done with, uh, you are done with the formulation, you need to check whether our formulation is really in that size range or not. For that we need to determine with the, the their size with the help of micrometry also there are few more applications but these are uh, the major applications as far as uh, pharmacy or pharmacy graduate are concerned we will be uh, focusing ourselves with these kind of applications now how to go for how, how to proceed for this experiment the first and the foremost thing is uh, the materials that we require. Normally we require sample material like say for example starch or our prepared formulation or calcium oxalate crystals whatever the sample is it you can choose any of the sample. Equipment. The major equipment required for this is microscope then a stage micrometer. Now stage micrometer is a simple slide. Now this slide has uh, a circle at the center as you can see here and this circle has been etched with a microscopic scale. This is a scale. I will be showing you the scale with a zoomed view in the next slides. So this kind of a slide microscopic slide with an etched scale on it uh, is called as stage micrometer. And the least count of this st uh, stage micrometer is 0 0.01 mm. That means if you consider the distance between two consecutive lines, two immediate neighboring lines, the distance will be 
0.01 so that is called as the least count another equipment we require for this is the eyepiece micrometer now eyepiece micrometer is very similar to our normal eyepiece but it has been fitted with one more lens or one more scale and you can see here the scale this is also a scale and it has been etched with one, 0 to 100 markings on it and you can find the numbers on this. Now how will you differentiate between a stage micrometer and an eyepiece, microscope, uh, eyepiece micrometer under the microscope is that the, the stage micrometer does not have any numbers etched on it. Just lines are etched but there are no number like 0, 10, 20 are absent on this scale whereas 0, 10, 20 everything is present on this scale further you can rotate this ocular microscope or eyepiece micrometer that means when you rotate the eyepiece the scale will also move you can place it horizontally vertically slightly tilted depending upon the particle to be measured now we'll have a look at the calibration uh, in the previous experiments, we, you all might be aware about the cal calibration method, but still, if we, you are unable to understand from the previous um, videos, we will discuss here the calibration in brief. <coughs> now see, this is the stage micrometer. This is the zoomed view of stage micrometer. You can see, notice here that there are no numbers etched on it only lines now you can see uh, the stage micrometer the entire length of the stage micrometer that is starting from this point to the last point is 1 mm the entire length is 1 mm and uh, it has 100 divisions in it so one entire mm has been divided into 100 divisions so you can count the distance between the two consecutive or two successive lines is called as a single division. So if 1 mm has 100 divisions, one division will correspond to 1 mm divided by 100 that is 0.01 mm. So the distance between these two successive lines that is the one long, long line and the shortest line is 0.01 mm. So this is what the stage micrometer will look under the microscope. Now the upper scale is called as an eyepiece micrometer. Here you can notice the presence of certain numbers etched on it 0, 10, 20, 30. So with the help, with the help of these number you can distinguish between the stage and the uh, eyepiece micrometer. The problem with the eyepiece micrometer is that uh, this eyepiece micrometer according to the user according to the microscope the focal length of the eyepiece micrometer can be sometimes above or below or you can say more or less that means a person with unaided eye or without any uh, with a normal eye vision he, he has some suppose a length focal length or he has adjusted the coarse adjustment knob and fine adjustment knob and seen the stage micrometer but if a, another person with some spectacles or some um, numbers or to his vision like plus or minus he he, he might in uh, change the uh, course no adjustment knob either in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction to adjust the view so from person to person the view varies now that is the major reason why we need to calibrate this eyepiece micrometer eyepiece micrometer cannot be at the same distance uh, or the focal distance cannot be the same for all the microscope or for all the users therefore we need to calibrate the eyepiece micrometer with the help of stage micrometer stage micrometer will be at the constant position and this this Made, uh, uh, scale is used to calibrate the eyepiece. Now we'll see how it is calibrated. You need to move the um, knobs on the stage in order to adjust the slide. 
so you can uh, you have to uh, adjust it in such a way that it overlaps upon the eyepiece micrometer now the view will be somewhat like this you can <coughs> arrange the two uh, scales uh, coinciding or superimposing upon one another now we will our first job is to superimpose the first two lines like the zeroth line of the eyepiece micrometer and the zeroth line of the stage micrometer we have made them superimpose upon each other now our next job is to check which is the next consecutive or next immediate line that is getting superimposed we just have a look see you some can find that the second line of the stage micrometer can coincide with the third line or is coinciding with the third line of eyepiece micrometer further you can see here the fourth line of stage micrometer is getting coincided with sixth line of eyepiece micrometer also you can notice here this that is the sixth line of the stage micrometer is getting coincided with ninth line of the stage uh, eyepiece micrometer but in these conditions the best way is to choose the immediate next line now immediate next line means this we have purposefully purposely or we have manually coincided what is the next immediate line this is the next immediate line that is the reason why we need to skip these two lines or we should not consider these two lines instead try to consider this line so these we will skip and this is the uh, line that we will take in consideration for calibration or calculation that means <coughs> two divisions of stage micrometer are equivalent to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer see this this is the second division of stage micrometer one this is the first and this is second now similarly here this is first line second line and third line that means third division so two stage uh, divisions of stage micrometer are equivalent to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer therefore or what we know is you can read here this the length of one division of stage micrometer is 0.01 mm this is the least count so, therefore two divisions of stage micrometer will correspond to or will be equal to 0.02 mm one division is of 0.01 mm therefore two divisions will be of 0.02 mm <coughs> therefore this two these two divisions or 0.02 mm will be equal to three divisions of eyepiece micrometer because two divisions of stage are equal to 0.02 therefore two division uh, 0.02 mm will be equal to these three divisions of eyepiece micrometer now to determine the distance between one division of eyepiece micrometer we will, we will need to that uh, divide this 0 0.02 by the three three divisions therefore 0 0.02 divided by 3 will be equal to 0 0.0067 so now what is this this is the correction factor or you can say one the distance between one division of eyepiece micrometer and this microscope was found to be 0 0.067 so now this this 0 0.067 is the least count between the zeroth line and the first line of the eyepiece micrometer this is how we need to calibrate the eyepiece micrometer we will see how it can be useful for determining the mean diameter or previous slide we have noticed that the two divisions of stage micrometer were corresponding to around three divisions of eyepiece micrometer now we are not in need of the stage micrometer because this is just a slide and we need to replace this slide with the slide of fibers what we are supposed to determine the length and width of so we will replace this stage micrometer with the slide of fibers so we are taking out the stage micrometer slide what we currently know is one division of eyepiece micrometer is equal to 
0.0067 mm. Now, suppose we want to find out the length of a fiber. Now, we will see, suppose this is the red fiber and we need to find the length of this fiber. We can measure right from this point that is 5. It starts from 5 and it ends up to 30. That means the length of this fiber is 25 because it starts from 5. 5 to 30 means 25. 25 divisions of eyepiece micrometer are uh, is the length of this red fiber. And what about the width? For the width, we need to rotate the eyepiece micrometer. You can rotate the eyepiece micrometer in any angle you want. So now we are rotating it in exactly 90 degree and we will change the or we will move the slide so that the fiber superimposes on the uh, etchings of the eyepiece micrometer. So here you can notice the width. Width of this fiber, it starts from 50 and ends at 53. That means the width of fiber is three divisions of eyepiece micrometer. We will take another example. Suppose you have this kind of a fiber. Let us call this as blue fiber. For this blue fiber, again, we need to rotate the eyepiece micrometer and record the length of this blue fiber. It starts from 60 and ends up to 78. That means 18 divisions. So length of this blue fiber is 18 divisions of eyepiece micrometer. Again, to uh, determine its width, we need to rotate the eyepiece micrometer or rotate just the eyepiece by 90 degree and superimpose it on the width of the fiber. So again, here it starts from 50 and ends somewhere around 4.5 to 5. We will consider it as 5 divisions. So width of the fiber is 5 divisions of eyepiece micrometer. So this is how you can determine the length as well as width of any fiber. You can rotate the eyepiece micrometer at any degree you want. There is, it is not always possible that the fibers will lie in exactly um, same line. They can be somewhat tilted. So accordingly you can change the rotation of the eyepiece micrometer. The actual view of fibers is somewhat like that, like this. So some fibers are tilted, some are not exactly straight, they are somewhat bent. So you need to determine the length accordingly. Length as well as the width. Now, uh, while recording, make sure you draw, you count minimum 50 fibers and draw a table of objects or fiber number length and width as we have seen here and now take the average of the length and average of the width and multiply the average with the correction factor. Now in our case the correction factor was 0.0067. So average length is 8 because 8 is the average of these my piece micrometer divisions. 8 multiplied by 0.0067 so 0.0536 mm is the average length of the fibers similarly average width of the fiber is 2 multiplied by 0.0067 now where this 2 came from is the average of the width so average width is 0.0134 mm so this is how you can determine the length and width of the fibers